The primary suite. Shit. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel, you guys. We are here at our 64th build. It is done. Finally. I could hang out in this Dutch door all day long. But you are here for the house tour. We have built this house over the last 20 months from the ground up, and we are so excited to walk you through the whole dang thing. You're gonna love it, and we can't wait to show you what's in store, so come on in. This house has so much natural light, which we can't buy. We can design it and hope that it turns out this beautiful, and in this case, it absolutely has. This lot is an east-west exposure, so we get beautiful sun in the morning, and then also beautiful sun for sunset. And because we have windows and doors on both sides, it just floods in. Yeah. And we've been installing the project, and of course, like I said, building it for a long time, and every single time we're here, I feel like we discover a new angle and a new amount of shadowing that mm -hmm. is just so lovely. So in the front door, we have a double Dutch door with fluted glass, and then here on the opposite side of the foyer, this whole thing opens up so that all you see is this beautiful pool moment that I would really love to get into right now. Yeah. <laughs> in addition, what else do you guys love about this foyer moment so much? Um, I really love the floor inlay. We have brick border going around. It's just a perfect entry moment for an inlay like this. And then we have the wood converging in the middle. So it's just such a moment when you, right when you walk in. This light is a custom piece and it's one of my favorites in the whole house. Um, I love that it's centered under a round table, which feels formal, but in this house it just feels totally. more informal and very inviting and relatable. Um, and then this. Des designer secret, if you will, seems so simple, but these are hooks. So they're actually just like a, a coat hook or a wood hook that you would find. And we pair them together in threes and twos and ones and just hung them really abstractly, but still with some pattern. Um, it turns out it turned out so incredible. And truly, when the light is coming in from a certain angle, you get shadows from them because they're 3D and off the wall, which we love. So don't settle at just art or gallery frames. You can use objects, you can hang things that have depth to them. And then as the light changes in your home, it will change. This floor plan is called an H floor plan. And so you enter into the center of the home and then it's segmented for really living and kind of enjoying your daily life and then sleeping. So it's not a split floor plan, which I think for a long time, everyone put a lot of value into split floor plans, but this one functions as so, but has so much more impact between living and sleeping. So we'll show you the rest. So the den space. This has become a really popular space in, when, in designing new builds, right? We feel like families these days, they like a space that's attached to the kitchen that you can relax and watch TV, but then they also like a space closer to secondary bedrooms where maybe you're a little bit removed, right? And this kind of stays a little more relaxed. This is where yeah. they feel like it doesn't have to feel so formal or so beautiful all the time. Right. And it totally. feels more lived in. Like we watch football here, yeah. we play games, we do a puzzle. We watch Real Housewives. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. watch Real Housewives. Yeah. But so this space is crucial, we feel, in a floor plan that's, that's well suited for a busy family uh, because it just gives you a lot more living space. And in here, from both a hardscape standpoint to an uh, uh, interior standpoint, we wanted to have fun with it and we wanted to play. And so we selected um, your favorite chairs. My favorite chairs ever. Um, I only let a few hands touch this book. I'm just yes. <laughs> I love these chairs. We've all loved these chairs. This is the kind of like furniture moment that a client's like, cool, but no, not coming in my house. And so we love that we got to use these here. They're not comfortable at all, but they're such a statement piece and a great talking piece. And I mean, they feel pretty good. We also okay. added this swing. How oh. cute is this? Wait, this is your wait I'm kind of scared. Yeah. Yay. Oh, wait, it's so <laughs> good. Yeah, right? I would totally be here the whole time just watching TV. I love it. So this floor plan has a Jack and Jill layout, which is two bedrooms that share a bathroom. So we took the furniture literally here and we made a Jack room and a Jill room. So this is Jack. He's probably like a preteen. We kind of made um, up a character in our head and that's kind of what we're going with. So in here we went with a whitewash oak cabinet, some marble hex flooring, 
and a three by 24 matte porcelain tile for the shower. It feels really androgynous because in our heads, Jack and Jill are sharing this and it's something that they can grow into. In Jill's room, we kept the theme going and we chose these pink beds to contrast with some black light fixtures. We really went all out. We usually don't do a light pink here, but we went for it and it turned out so cute. And Jill and a friend have the best room in the house. So also off the den, we have this amazing guest retreat. Um, one thing I want to point out really quick is the door moments that we did all throughout the house. So we have a subtle contrast in these doors with the kerf cut detail. This is um, painted pharaoh in ball drop cloth. I feel like they're the perfect little contrast. It's not too dark, not too light, but you can still kind of get that moment. And then coming into this guest retreat, I would love to stay in here. Uh, we've got the exterior entrance to the doors that go to the courtyard. So if you want to come in privately, you totally can. Um, and then going into the furnishings in here, it's just super relaxed and zen. We really layered the bed here with lots of pillows, lots of textiles. It looks so comfortable. I kind of want to jump in, but I'm not going to. Um, and then we got the layered rugs over here and just so much natural light as it's consistent throughout the house. Uh, your guests will want to stay probably too long and hopefully they don't. But then coming into the bathroom over here, I'm going to take you through. <laughs> Now coming into the bathroom, I feel like this scheme is probably one of the most monochromatic moments that we have throughout the house in the bathroom schemes. We've got the putty cabinets paired with the quartz countertops and the polished nickel plumbing. Kind of offsets it all with this playful cement tile floor. So you've got the pattern in here. It's just a little unexpected um, and brings just a little bit amount of contrast. And then we've got the shower surround that's kind of a complimenting tone of the cabinets. Oh, hi, sorry, I was just doing some laundry. <laughs> Come on in. This is probably one of my favorite rooms in a home, um, the laundry room. Some people spend a lot of time in here, so we always wanna make it super beautiful and again, just complimenting of the rest of the home. So come on in, I'm gonna show you around. We chose these, again, whitewash, white oak cabinets in here and paired with this super modern black um, cabinet pole. Probably the most modern line that we've picked throughout the house when it comes to our cabinet hardware. So for the flooring in here, we chose this amazing blue stone. It's got the tumbled edge, so it feels super hand finished and European. I think it just adds the perfect amount of contrast to the lightness that's going on in the rest of the space. Um, paired with these countertops, these are from Arizona Tile. They're these city white satin quartz. Super chalky and earthy. Um, feels great for like a utilitarian space and Great to do laundry in and you can clean in here. I just think you can do all the things, but it's still super beautiful and calming. We are in the primary suite. I could just wrap this whole thing up <laughs> as is and take it to my house. We brought the concept of taking the engineered hardwood floor and putting it on the ceiling to our builders. We were all a little uneasy about it. We had never done it before between their years of experience and ours, we'd never tried it. So of course we've seen and done plenty of tongue and groove on ceilings. We've done plenty of beams, rafters, trusses, exposed steel I-beams, you name it, we've done it. But we have never placed engineered hardwood on the ceiling and I am so thrilled with the way it turned out. Um, it is just so earthy and balanced and it's really interesting. I think the flooring up on the ceiling looks very different than it looks kind of on the floor, right? Um, and that just shows you how much light plays in, in with our hardscape choices. So in addition to the flooring, we also have a soapstone fireplace surround here, which is just stunning. Um, we carried in a lot of the same elements that you see throughout the house into this primary suite. Then from a furnishing standpoint, this bed, it's just so cozy and it reminds me of a rom-com that's directed by Nancy Myers, who happens to be my favorite director and it just makes you feel grown up and it feels romantic and, and I love that. So we went really layered on the bedding. We have a ruffle pillow here that I can honestly tell you I never thought I would have in one of my homes. Um, but I just kind of felt like it was calling for this feminine kind of influx and, and punch and it turned out so beautifully. So we've got a, a ruffle pillow here. We've got the wing back of the bed. It's this nice natural linen. It's upholstered. Again, it feels layered and earthy. So many different tones and colors, but still have this pop of black. I, I truly think that this bedroom would be really lovely for just about any person, regardless of their interest. It's just a great space. 
and then into the primary bathroom, you guys. If there was a drum roll, now would be the time because this space is incredible. We are here in the primary bathroom and there are so many insane design elements here. I don't think I could pick one if you asked me to, but the very first thing that we designed here is the bathtub that we brought over from the UK, which I'll tell you about shortly. The second thing is this integrated quartz trough basin. In a lot of instances with primary bathrooms, you've got these huge, immense spaces, or we've got a his and a hers side, or a hers and a hers, or a his and a his, whatever. The two people that live there, they each have their own sides. In this floor plan, we have one elongated vanity area, and so we wanted the, the trough and the sink to really do a lot of talking. So we've got wall-mounted faucets here from Kohler in French Gold. They are stunning. This is their purest collection. It's truly one of my favorites. I hope to have it in my own house someday. And then we created from scratch this integrated quartz sink. So the basin is really long and beautiful. You still have plenty of room for yourself and you're not gonna be elbowing into your partner, um, but it just turned out so gorgeous. And I love that it has the apron front here, tons of storage in the cabinetry so that you can set your products down. This is called a horseshoe drawer. If you're designing your cabinets at home and you have the opportunity to have your cabinet maker make you a horseshoe cabinet drawer, this is going to give you so much more storage. So you actually get access access to all that space that's normally dead space that's around the P-trap. It's the best use of all that kind of weird area underneath your sinks. If you watch the Project Tell All for the 64th build, we talk a lot about lighting and this fixture is one of the fixtures that we talk about. This sucker is huge. We actually saw it while we were at Market in Dallas a few months ago and we've been wanting to use it and I am so thrilled with how it just brings this space together. And it's so playful and it gives this space the edge that it really needs. So you can see by me standing under it how truly large it is. And because it's very close to our tub and shower moment, all three of them play together so beautifully. So this tub is made of acrylic. It's a matte acrylic resin and it is so incredible. It's got this iron kind of cage to it. Like I said, we imported it from the UK and it was worth all $3,000 in shipping <laughs> and freight. I truly believe that. I had to talk the builders into that, but I think now that it's installed, we all feel the same way. And then we took a chance on a white gridded shower. You've of course seen all of the window gridding or grilling as some call it on showers. It's a really on trend moment, but we haven't worked with a white grid before. So this is white. It's with limestone on the interior of the shower. And then we also have a marble eight point um, star and cross detail more of that Kohler French gold. That is a massive shower that you could basically have a little car wash situation in, but it's so beautiful. And I think the white grid really helped soften it and set it off without creating too much contrast, of course, because the lighting fixture is really very dark and black and it's just incredible. I, I wouldn't mind squeegeeing the glass if I was showering in this thing. So I don't know about you, but I feel like most women in my life, they are either I stand up and I throw my makeup on and hope it sticks, or I do my makeup in the car when I'm taking my kids to school, or maybe you're one of those makeup people that actually sits down and really enjoys that moment where you get to put your makeup on five minutes of calm. So this vanity is perfect for that. And then we also designed a salon drawer. So this has a place for all of your hot tools. It's got power in it. So you can plug that Dyson hair wrap, air wrap. It's called the air wrap, air wrap. Send me one of those Dyson air wrap in um, and you can keep all of those hot tools like I said and all of the makeup and all of that condensed over here and then this is a custom iron towel ladder that we design so in this particular floor plan there isn't a ton of room for hanging towels we've got just two hooks over here and we wanted to make sure that there was enough room to hang towels but also have some sort of linear kind of visual moment so don't be afraid when you have extra space like, what am I gonna do with this? I'm probably not gonna have that much makeup. So we decided to take this extra amount here, probably about a foot, and, and use it moving upward so that the eye kind of travels up. And then you can hang your towel so it does double duty, gives you a custom moment, and really helps turn every single angle of this space into some, some space that you're gonna wanna be in every day. The great room at this project is definitely part of what does most of the talking. This space has indoor outdoor living and it completely transforms this room. So 
this room itself isn't the biggest space we've ever designed. And actually we loved that. It allowed us to be so much more intentional with w the, the finishes that we wanted to choose. So the soapstone, which we haven't gotten a huge chance to talk about yet. Tell us about those slabs. So these slabs, we wanted to tie in the the contrast of the kitchen with the natural soapstone slabs. We found these at a local slab yard and just picked them based off the photos. And from we love, yeah. yeah, literally from a photo. And we're like, oh, that looks great. And they turned out so beautiful. We're obsessed with them with the little fireballs instead of wood. It's a more modern take on it. Um, and then to the right, we did this shelving moment and we wanted to do a weird little three arm light um, that adds, kind of ties in the chandelier too with the shades and it gives it a little styling moment. And P.S. we love anything with three legs. Three yeah. legs or three arms. Yeah. <laughs> three-legged stool, three-legged chair, three-armed yeah. fixture. And then moving here into the kitchen. The kitchen. One of the biggest things that we actually designed this house around from the beginning, yes. we saw this at the Kitchen and Bath show back in January, like two or three mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's a statement piece. It's an art piece. This is something that like... As a chef, <laughs> as a chef, generous term. Yeah, whoa. As someone, <laughs> as someone who cooks at home and, like, or chef. and likes to Instagram it, as a cook, yeah. this excites the hell out of me. Uh -huh. Like just to see a range, and a, or I'm sorry, a cooktop, really, this is a cooktop, a cooktop that gives you as much impact as a range would without even having to worry about the, the oven component on the bottom. You get so much storage here in the drawers. You can compartmentalize and modularly design how you want these burners. Um, this is not a paid advertisement. This is just designers going absolutely nuts Crazy. for a really amazing yeah. cooking mechanism. So yeah, we really did design the entire house around this and thing. This is the first one in Arizona, correct? First one in Arizona. Yep. You saw it here first. Yep, that's yeah. right. So, but yeah, this is incredible. The hood, why don't you tell us about the hood? Because this was the risk for us mm -hmm. when we designed it. So this hood is 10 foot hood. It's pretty much the same size as the island. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big one. And we did this really natural kind of looking ceramic tile on it that's super bright along with the black contrasting cabinets around it. It's just such a statement. And we talked about tiling the entire hood. We've done it, we've talked about it before, but never actually made it into kind of final design plans. And now I feel like I'm going to do this everywhere because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's so good. Yeah. It's just so good and it, it's so balanced, but it adds another layer without taking away from the rest of the design in the kitchen. There's a lot of elements happening in here. Yeah, it's not too much, yeah. which, I, which just, I love. It's like perfectly balanced. So much counter space. You still have your hood liner, so you're still going to take in all of the, the gook, if you will, from cooking. Um, the island, another piece that we, and actually before we even get there, another piece that yep. we used um, generously in this kitchen is called tambour. So this is where you see these fluted wood panels if you will. Um, and so instead of taking the cabinetry all the way to the top of the countertop and having a thicker countertop, we went for a two CM countertop, so a thinner countertop. And then we decided to fill that space with three inches of tambour. So um, even the amount that people have seen this project on Instagram have said, oh my gosh, I love that countertop edge detail. It's actually not the countertop. It's actually cabinet detail. And then by keeping the countertop thin, we we're able to have them work together really beautifully. I think the polished brass just sets everything off. Mm -hmm. It's still my favorite. It's not going out. I know all of nope. you fight us on polished brass. Yes. <laughs> Cause some of you are still ripping it out of your house, but when you use it in the right way, it is still my favorite finish by far. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks so incredible in this kitchen. So now off the kitchen, we have the wine cava, one of my favorite parts of the home. This is also your all day dining. So you'll notice there's no formal dining room in the rest of the house. So this is kind of where you're gonna eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, all the things, lots of entertaining happening in here. As you can see, lots of drinking will be happening in here. So we've made this wine cava as storage, function, and also just a beautiful decor piece. So I'm gonna turn these lights on. I think that's gonna be a huge selling point. So you can see your wine, you get another little added detail. You can take in this brick that we did behind all of the custom arch built-ins. So you can store your wine, you can drink your wine, you can display your wine. It's just all around, it's so good. So on a day that it is not 120 degrees here in Arizona, 
This home will show best and definitely be best enjoyed with the doors open. So our door window package was from Sierra Pacific Windows and it is so incredible. You can tell how this entire corner opens. We also have a lounge area here where you'll of course be able to have your morning coffee and, and enjoy the evenings. And then the landscaping and pool, I would give you, like I said, an amazing tour, but it is so hot. So we're gonna shoot you some really good footage so you can take a full yard tour. now in the detached studio, which can fully function as a separate bedroom. It has a full working bathroom, full closet. So when we were designing the space, we kind of thought, what would this be used for? It could be a gym, it could be an office, a nap space perhaps. Help me, doctor. <laughs> Or a therapist lounge. <laughs> like, likely not a therapist yeah. in your awesome backyard, but we were feeling travel writer vibes, yeah. like possibly blogger, architect, ar yeah. someone in a creative setting. Designer, interior designer. <laughs> if you buy this house, you might find us working in here. Yeah. 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 So come with me to the bathroom. Here in the studio bath, I think we got the most playful of all of the tile schemes. We took different shades of penny tile and ran them in different directions. So we started here on the floor going horizontally and then as the penny tile moves up the shower, it goes vertically. And the key to having penny tile look this good is an excellent installer. Penny tile is by no means the easiest to install. In fact, I think it's probably one of the hardest tiles to install. It's a lot of grout, it has to be perfectly even, it has to be perfectly straight. And when we saw this tile install happening, we were so elated and happy and joyous. And both us and the tile installer celebrated. I don't think he wants to do this again anytime soon. Um, so he won't be for hire for any other projects, but um, it turned out so beautiful. And I definitely think is a, is a fan favorite and a moment here at the 64th build. That wraps another one. Another amazing spec project or just project in general. We like to talk to you guys a lot on YouTube, so make sure you talk to us too. We respond to all of our comments. Like, subscribe, do the thing. We'll keep doing our thing over here. Let's party. Yeah. Shall we? Cheers. Till the next Cheers. Time. Cheers.